the news from ITN. Bosnia, violence flares, president kidnapped and peace monitor killed. Troops in Los Angeles, Bush says use the force you need. Wigan make it five in a row as they take the Challenge Cup. And why America's marauder men are over here, 50 years on. Good evening. It's been reported that the Serbian-led Yugoslav army is holding the Bosnian president. The unconfirmed report says he was seized as he arrived back in Sarajevo from European Community Peace Talks in Portugal. Earlier in Mostar, a Belgian member of the EC monitoring team was killed and a colleague wounded. In Sarajevo, the Federal Army and Muslim forces fought fierce battles. Both sides reported many dead and injured. Beirut-style gun battles erupted in Sarajevo as local Muslim troops took on Christian Serbs and their Federal Army allies this afternoon. No one knows how many casualties there have been. Ambulances can't get into the city centre. We control Sarajevo, but, but they, they shoot from, from uh, the hills around Sarajevo, you know, with, with, uh, with, uh, uh, with tanks. But it's not clear how long these Muslims will be able to hold on. The city is a patchwork of Muslim and Serb areas. These Muslim troops have just a handful of bazookas and anti-tank weapons to take on the Federal Army tanks that are ringed against them. A Federal Air Force MiG fighter reinforced their message, stop fighting or we'll blitz the city. EC representatives are trying to stop the battles, but they're not optimistic now. And all we can do is appeal for these people to cease fire so that then we can decide who's right and who's wrong. And the death of an EC monitor today in the town of Mostar means that all peace attempts are in jeopardy anyway. A column of black smoke now flies over Sarajevo. After weeks of standoff, many now fear that the Federal Army is poised to move in and to take control. This evening, the gunfights are still raging and there's almost no hope of a ceasefire. The city is bracing itself for a terrifying night. John Schofield, ITN, Sarajevo. There's been an uneasy calm on the streets of Los Angeles after three days of rioting which killed 44 people. National Guard troops have been patrolling the city. Over 4,000 regular soldiers and Marines are still on alert. President Bush has told them to use whatever force is necessary. American infantrymen and Marines arrive in Los Angeles, the first for 20 years to be deployed to quell unrest in their own land. Their speciality is riot control, to withstand provocation, but to respond if necessary with force. They are evidence of the president's resolve. It's been the brutality of a mob, pure and simple. And let me assure you, I will use whatever force is necessary to restore order. President Bush also spoke of his personal reaction to the videotape beating of black motorist Rodney King. I felt anger. I felt pain. I thought, how can I explain this to my grandchildren? The four white patrolmen acquitted for the beating may yet face charges. The Justice Department confirmed the urgency of its civil rights investigation. A grand jury subpoena has been issued today in furtherance of that investigation. We want peace! We want peace! In the ghettos of Los Angeles, they have begun to try to rebuild from the ruins of the riots. And when you go to your business and find out that you don't have a job, then you will feel all the anger that we're feeling right now. Everything that I own is in there. No community was left untouched. The damage done was to every ethnic group across every racial that. divide. Meanwhile, hundreds of National Guardsmen sealed off the very center of Los Angeles as courts began dealing with more than 6,000 offenders arrested in the rioting. It's 30 years since troops were on the streets of Los Angeles in numbers like this, but the very scale of the security operation demonstrates how lawless those streets had become. Kevin Dunn, ITN, Los Angeles. Well, I'm joined now live from Los Angeles by the Reverend Carl Washington, who's a community leader. Mr. Washington, are you happy with President Bush's suggestion that further action may be taken against the patrolmen originally involved? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we're calling for total peace in our community, and uh, we welcome the uh, uh, to bring about peace and calmness to the community, whatever measures need to be taken. Um, we're out telling um, the community and the people that they must remain calm and refrain from uh, 
uh, looting and destroying any more property, uh, that it's time for healing. Uh, the message is clear. Um, all across the world, we have made a statement uh, that we will not uh, tolerate any more injustice. Uh, now is the time for healing, not war, no more violence. And uh, the president, we welcome the idea of more uh, uh, troops, if necessary, to bring about calmness in our community. What is it now going to take to rebuild race relations? It's going to take a number of things uh, to be uh, real brief with you. It's going to take uh, total uh, justice for the people. They must be um, uh, satisfied with the justice that is given. Um, we're not dealing with one ethnic group. We're talking about a multi of uh, people who are involved, uh, who uh, felt the um, injustice that was done during the uh, beating of Rodney King and the jury verdict to find all those officers not guilty. Now time to bring in the government to come in and to uh, satisfy the people and let them know that every effort is being made to bring by a, a justice system. We have a new police chief coming into Los Angeles, a uh, reform in the Los Angeles Police Department, so we feel real good about that. Mr. Washington, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Irish detectives searching for arms smuggled from Libya to the IRA, so they found a major cache of guns and ammunition. It was hidden in a huge bunker near Newmarket in County Cork. In Belfast, loyalists attacked mourners at the funeral of Conor Maguire, the terrorist from the Irish People's Liberation Organization, who was shot dead on Wednesday. In remote farmland in County Cork, Irish anti-terrorist squad detectives put on show one of their biggest ever IRA arms finds. More than 50 AK-47 assault rifles wrapped up for underground storage, a general purpose machine gun, in all, two tons of guns and ammunition. Enough weaponry here for innumerable terrorist attacks. The cache was hidden in an underground bunker measuring 30 feet by 15 feet. All of it arms smuggled from Libya in 1985 and 86. Irish anti-terrorist squad detectives have been searching the southwest of the Republic for the past three months in a major sweep called Operation Silo. It was only this week they spoke openly of being optimistic about making breakthroughs in the search for vast stocks of arms given to the IRA by Libya's Colonel Gaddafi. While police in the south celebrated their find today, in Northern Ireland, the IUC was out in force for the funeral of a terrorist. Scuffles broke out on the steps of a church. Police said they had to ensure there were no paramilitary displays, but the priest accused them of turning his Belfast church into a fortress. Conor Maguire was a member of the Republican Irish People's Liberation Organization, shot dead by loyalist UVF terrorists on Wednesday. They claim Maguire murdered a teenage Protestant who worked nearby. Later, people in that area lined the streets. They were not there to mourn, they attacked mourners in their cars. This a snapshot of hatred on the streets of a city where sectarian violence is rife. Andrew Simmons, ITM, Belfast. The detective leading the hunt for the missing bank clerk, Alison Manwaring, and her father Matthew, says he has little hope of finding the couple alive. He's appealed to people walking in the woods around London this weekend to look out for any clues. Alison and her father disappeared from their home in Barking nine days ago. Police are investigating an arson attack which badly damaged Wolverhampton Wanderers Ground. The fire caused damage estimated at £100,000. 30 shotgun cartridges were found embedded in the pitch. Today's game between Wolves and Middlesbrough still went ahead. Middlesbrough won 2-1. Now, on news of the rest of today's sport, here's David Bobin. Rugby's two trophies were won in contrasting style. At Twickenham, the winning points were scored within seconds of the end of extra time, Bath beating Harlequins 15-12. At Wembley, Wigan won their fifth challenge trophy in a row, the score 28-12, but Castleford made them fight all the way. Wigan are the last team to forgive mistakes. The Castleford fullback Stedman made one after five minutes. A fire made him pay dearly. Castleford were in danger of complete collapse in the first half. Dermot sent Edwards on his way for his 40th try of the season. Then right on half-time, a fire proved his value as the world's most expensive player, giving two defenders a yard start and still squeezing through the gap. But in a much more competitive second half, Castleford came back to prove that Wigan may one day be beaten. A score from Blackmore, followed by a move that looked to try all the way, until a fire appeared from nowhere to clear the danger. But although two more tries sealed the victory, the Wigan coach could still find fault. As a coach, I wasn't that happy with the uh, rugby league we played, but, but uh, as a part of Wigan, 
part of the team, part of the town, I'm uh, elated. I, you know, it's a fantastic day for the club. We've given two daft tries in the first half. And yeah, we just didn't play to the, you know, the game plan we set out. And uh, that's the most upsetting part about the game. So five in a row for Wigan, but it had been tighter than most of the others. At Twickenham, it couldn't have been any closer. Bath came back from 12-3 down at half-time, the Glanville scoring to level the match at 12-all. They were still locked together until seconds before the end of extra time, that a 45-yard drop from Stuart Barnes went inches over the bar. Bath had won their seventh trophy in nine seasons. Gary Lineker said goodbye to English football today as he played his last match for Spurs before leaving for Japan. And typical of the man who's won just about every honour in the game, apart from a league champions medal, he signed off in style. He scored Spurs' only goal at Old Trafford four minutes from the end, but Manchester United ran out winners by three goals to one. At the bottom of the first division, West Ham and Notts County were already down, so it was up to Luton to see if they could pull off another great escape. It looked good when Julian James put them one up, but then two goals from Notts County, both from Rob Matthews, sealed their fate. Second Division football next season. In the Second Division, Middlesbrough gained automatic promotion to the Premier League alongside Ipswich. Third place will be fought out between Derby, Leicester, Cambridge and Blackburn. This was the third goal in David Speedy's hat-trick for Blackburn as they beat Plymouth 3-1 and consigned Peter Shilton's team to the Third Division along with Brighton and Port Vale. In racing, the 2000 Guineas was won at Newmarket by Rodrigo de Triano, ridden by 56-year-old Lester Piggott. It was Piggott's 30th classic success overall, but the first since his dramatic return to racing two and a half years ago. Rodrigo de Triano on the outside provided the perfect ride for the man known as the Galloping Grandad. Piggott coming with a perfectly timed finish to take the first prize of more than £100,000. The full SP, Rodrigo de Triano, 6-1, Lucky Lindy, 50 to 1, Pursuit of Love, 9 to 2, and fourth, Silver Wisp, at 25 to 1. Britain's Nigel Mansell is in pole position for tomorrow's Spanish Grand Prix, although rain is threatening to spoil the race. The weather certainly dominated proceedings today, but Mansell's time in qualifying in the dry yesterday ensured his continuing domination of his rivals. So, for the fourth race in succession, his Williams will start from the front row. Finally, an advance party of a friendly invasion of 20,000 American servicemen has been arriving in Britain. They're coming to commemorate the 50th anniversary of their posting over here during the war. They'll be revisiting their old haunts and reliving memories. Among the servicemen are air crews from the famous B-26 bombers. Morning. These are the Marauder men. You'll be nice. You should be one of my pilots. <laughs> they were all young men when they arrived in Britain 50 years ago to fly the B-26 bomber on raids into northern Europe. Their plane was called the Marauder. It was just a real good, rugged ship. If you've seen the way some of these planes came back, uh, beat all the heck that they got back. Best damn airplane in the world it brought me home back to uh, 765 times. <laughs> the Marauders flew in tight formations, much lower and faster than the heavy B-17s. Often piloted by 19-year-olds, they were pinpoint bombers attacking bridges, airfields like this one in Holland, and later on they were sent against the well-concealed V-1 and V-2 installations. Today, all over Essex, the airmen were welcomed back to little English villages, which had been their home bases for three years. Seventy marauder men came to Matching, and their local, where it seemed safe to ask if they really had been oversexed and overpaid, as well as over here. The women would, uh, they always said they had to, the dance was on Saturday night and the dinner, and they all had to be off the post within three days. So. <laughs> Up to 20,000 American airmen will come back this summer, and most will visit this big cemetery outside Cambridge to remember old friends, pilots, bombardiers, navigators, who never made it back to the United States. You see someone you recognize? Yes, he's my uh, bombardier. How was he killed? Oh, uh, they went down the North Sea and uh, crash landed. And I was flying on the same raid in a different plane, and I saw him go down. David Rose, ITN, Cambridge. And that's the news tonight. From all of us here on the weekend team, good night.